What's the deal with the helipad and back? I want to know if you know. Hey, Walking Dead fans, welcome back to the channel. Spoiler alert for all things Walking Dead TV. We'll be talking about the shows and mainly Jadis or Anne. I'll probably call her Jadis uh, through the video. So I remember when Jadis came on the screen, I didn't know if I liked the junkyard people and I... I didn't really, I guess, and I didn't like Jadis either. I didn't think she'd be a long-term character, but she did turn into one. And a big one at that, uh, one of the people that ties into the helicopter group or the CRM group, and she did pretty much all along, it seemed like, or at least from the time that we met her on screen, all the way along to when she went away with Rick in the helicopter. Hey, y'all, I just wanted to let you know that like, I can't talk about the Rick Grimes movies and that. But they are still happening. And I'm looking forward to probably being a part of them. <laughs> I just know that uh, you guys are kind of waiting out there. And um, I'm waiting too. I'm looking forward. Uh, that's it. From a little bird in La La Land. Mwah. It's been a few days since this was posted, but here's Jadis Pollyanna McIntosh on social media. She put up a little video saying the Rick movies were still going to happen. She should be a part of them, and she can't wait. So that's a good confirmation, at least, hopefully, that the Rick movies will happen. And the helicopter people know her as Jadis, so she may be reverting back to Jadis in the movies. So talking a little bit about Jadis and who she is and what she is, um, how she operates... Heath went missing, and we found out eventually that it's the junkyard people that took Heath so that they could give him to the helicopter people. Pretty much Jadis and the junkyard uh, group were trading humans, A's and B's they call them, to the helicopter people for supplies. You traded people, yes? For supplies for my people. And the way that we understand it, and, you know, in this photo you see that Jadis is marking the container or the connex that Rick is being held in an A. She also had Gabriel, and from my understanding and from what we can gather, she was calling him a B at this point. But this was way back during the Savior uh, confrontations that they were having Jadis was going back and forth uh, between Rick and Negan as far as her allegiance. But she had clearly marked Rick for an A. And she captured Negan later. She marked him for an A. Because when we get to the scene with Jadis and Father Gabriel, that's in Season 9, Episode 3. She pretty much lays it out. So she admits to trading people, and but she says eventually that it didn't start out that way. It just ended up there. So, you know, the way she's got her hair cut and some different things like that uh, lead you to believe, uh, since we've seen Isabel from Fear the Walking Dead, that she may have been a part of this helicopter group at some point in the past. And then she broke off or went off and started this little junkyard group trying to start her own little religion or whatever. You know, they talk funny and they they kind of acted funny and weird. Their leadership, just everything about them was kind of weird. And it almost seemed like Jadis kind of went off and wanted to start her own little thing in her own little place. And she was all about that. So I always thought maybe she broke off from that helicopter group. But it seems like in the junkyard on this night when she was talking before Gabriel showed up, talking on the radio to the helicopter pilot, she said she wanted to be able to get transportation out of there and uh, said that she, you know, she paid for it pretty much. She's done her part, but they said she has been compensated. And if you see the three circles on the applesauce can, that kind of thing, trading for supplies, she had already got compensated for all the people that she traded for supplies. And if they've pretty much got a system A, B down and they got people in connexes and they're taking people pretty regularly to get the supplies, it uh, pretty much looks like that Jadis, this was her thing at this point. She was taking people. Uh, and there's really no telling how many people she actually took 
and gave away to this helicopter group. Jadis, of course, asked Gabriel to come with her to this awesome place she was going to go away to on the helicopter. They had just kind of had feelings for each other, had sex the night before, I think, in that last episode or something. So she gets accused. This guy, Justin, what's this all about? Why she's running away, if you remember, that guy, Justin, he was being, or I guess he got killed and a bunch of the other saviors did by the Oceanside girls. They were kind of accusing Jadis of some of that, uh, something that happened to Justin. Rick was accusing her, so she just didn't want to take all of that shit, and she was going to the junkyard to uh, hitch a ride on that helicopter. So I guess the whole Justin Oceanside thing and Rick accusing her, causing her to leave Alexandria, uh, causing her to call the helicopter in, which uh, set up a meeting for that next morning, which is when Rick was trying to get the horde of uh, walkers uh, away and ended up blowing up the bridge, which led to Rick getting on the helicopter. I guess if the Justin thing hadn't happened, the helicopter thing wouldn't have happened. Would have the would the horde thing have happened like it did? Probably not. But anyway, that is just how things played out. But Father Gabriel would not leave with Jadis when she asked, and that led her to say, and all this time I thought you were a bee. So later on, we do see her with a walker going to let it bite uh, Father Gabriel. Same thing happened to Rick, an A. She marked it on the container he was in. Same thing was happening with Negan, and the same thing was about to happen with Father Gabriel, but before he was a B, what made him a B? Was it that he was a leader type? You know, Negan's the leader type, Rick's the leader type. Could it be that they let the walker bite uh, any alpha type male, beta type male, or female, could be, I guess, and uh, they suppress them from turning, and it kind of makes them into a slave where they have to take something to keep them from Uh, dying pretty much and turning into a walker. Scott Gimble said there was a sci-fi element to it and that's what's going to be in the movies. In this three circle group, the helicopter group, uh, the one Jadis is somehow tied into is tied in, you know, we saw it in Fear, we saw the helicopter, uh, we, we saw it in the trailer for the new series, World Beyond, and we definitely... Uh, Rick left in The Walking Dead in the helicopter, and the whole movies are going to be about that group and wherever they are and whatever they're doing and their mythology. And then we did see in Season 9, Episode 5, the last episode that Rick Grimes was in, the one he left on the helicopter in, when Jadis pulled up in the RV, the one she took uh, Heath in, Back in the day, it kind of stalled out on her, and so the helicopter pilot called her on the radio and said, hey, what's, uh, where where are you? I know you vacated, you and the group vacated the junkyard uh, since the last aborted pickup, which was Negan. She aborted because the flare, uh, you know, Negan and her were wrestling and the flare went out, so the helicopter didn't see the flare. It turned around and, and went back. And uh, he asked the status of the A, and she replied that it's ready for transport. So status of the A, it needs to have the bite, and it's ready for transport. It's all, you know, tied up and everything ready to go. But we've never seen uh, someone, or Rick didn't get bit, he got away. Negan didn't get bit, he got away. And she didn't let the walker bite Father Gabriel because of their little relationship kind of feelings for each other thing she just couldn't do it and she let him go so we've never actually seen uh, someone getting a bite what happens after that do they bandage them up do they just let them bleed you know what as they're tied up we're not really sure what happens after they get a bite Uh, do they fully turn it could be that they fully turn Uh, We just don't have enough information of what happens. We never did get to see that followed through uh, all the way. But it does seem like she has some knowledge of the place and what it is. Maybe she's been there. Uh, She's knowing that she has transport to there when she says, Hey, I'm desperate. I need evacuation. Come get me. 
um, but there was a price to pay. Uh, from what the radio guy said, hey, you got to have an A. That's your price for transport back to Emerald City or whatever it is, wherever they are, right? Uh, Philadelphia, the CRM base, the helicopter group base, right? So as we look at the new show, the new series, World Beyond, as we know, the helicopter's in it as well. We meet this character, Elizabeth. The three circles, uh, just just a, a really strange thing. We don't know all the details yet, but this new show, this young girl, these two sisters, they have a dad, they say, have went to uh, build the groundwork for the future to get us back to where, uh, you know, we were before. That it could take generations for the science to come together to get us there. So that's where the sci-fi element comes in, I think. Somehow it's tied in to these two sisters' dad, who has went to Philadelphia to lay the groundwork. So I think he's a pretty big player, a scientist, uh, I'm, I'm sure, possibly, for this three-circle group, for this Elizabeth lady. So in one of the trailers, this one sister says to the other, you didn't want dad to go, but he did, and now he may be in trouble. So what's the now he may be in trouble part? I'm thinking, did they get some kind of SOS message from their dad or that he's missing or something involved with the mom relaying a message? You know, how does they know that he's in trouble? Pretty exciting. He's some kind of big scientist, and it seems like they're heading to Philadelphia. When they leave out from Nebraska, they're heading to Philadelphia. Um, that's where Rick is. That's where the Three Circle Group supposedly uh, is doing all their experiments or their head headquarters will be or something like that. But uh, that's the Rick movie. And these kids are heading in that direction. Will they end up there? Scott Gimple says no uh, in some interviews that it won't tie into the movies as far as the characters. But who knows? It's the uh, the Walking Dead universe. And at this point, this three circle group has tied everything together. But how does Jadis really fit into it all? How big of a part will she play in the Walking Dead movie? A lot of people say and have a theory out there that they're going to be in a relationship together, Rick and Jadis, Rick and Ann, uh, when we come into the movies because of this six-year span. And I'm thinking we're going to get the first movie is going to happen within that six years. Will he be in a coma? Will Rick be in a coma and wake up just like the first episode in the TV show of season one? Will he wake up in Philadelphia from a coma? Uh, could he have been in a coma for six years? And that's why he didn't try to escape and get back to his family. But we come in on him waking up. Oh, just a lot of stuff going on. Let me know what you think about Jadis. I'll end this video right here. Let me know what you think about her, the junkyard, some of the past stuff, the A's and B's, the Three Circles, Helicopters, Philadelphia, the new show. Holy crap, can we even talk about all that kind of stuff? All in one video, it's just so much, so much. But I did the helicopter video, kind of placing where the helicopter appeared in all the shows. Uh, just kind of throw that out there. Um, so we can talk about that stuff there. The rest of the stuff here, man. Tell me about it in the discussion below and I'll join you there. As always, guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more dead stuff.